to talk about your first lesson here in our unit on forces, and we might as well start with the big one and talk about the force of gravity. And in order to talk about the force of gravity, we have to talk about Newton's unofficial fourth law, the law of universal gravitation. So let's get right to it. Uh, we have to define gravity as a force that attracts any two objects depending on their mass and their distance apart. Uh, I don't think this is overly surprising to anybody, but what is surprising is that we have an equation to describe this outright, uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation, which looks like this big ugly thing here, F sub G is equal to capital G, big M, small m, divided by R squared. Now, looks like there's lots of variables, but it's rather simple to follow. Big G is a new constant to uh, a lot of you. It's the universal gravitational constant, and that has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Again, if you look at the units, we're going to always deal with SI units, so make sure you have those straight. Uh, big M is going to be the mass of the first object. Small m is going to be the mass of the second object. And R is going to be the distance between their centers of masses. Now, you're going to see in a lot of these questions that uh, the center of mass may not be explicitly mentioned, but there will be words like altitude used, or whenever we're dealing with a planetary object, it's always going to have to involve uh, dealing with the radius from the center to the surface as well. Uh, another side note I'm going to say is, generally speaking, when I use this equation, I always take big M to mean the larger of the two masses, and that may not make a lot of sense right now, but when we get into derivations of gravitational field strength, it's going to be nice to know which M we're talking about. So uh, it's a good rule of thumb to stick with the idea of big M being the larger mass, small m being the smaller mass. So let's take a look at an example here. Uh, what is the force of gravity exerted on a 70 kilogram astronaut that is standing on Earth's surface? Well, if we draw a nice little picture, there's my pretty little picture. There's my grade 3 version of me, and we have some distance r here. Now when we're on the surface, we're going to use a couple of different constants. The first constant we're going to use is the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, uh, and the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Uh, almost in every case, uh, teachers will give you these constants, so don't worry about memorizing them, but you know what? It's not a bad couple of numbers to memorize. So, we take a look at Newton's universal law of gravitation, and look what we have here. Okay, beautiful. We have this, we have this, we have this, we have that. We're good to go. Let's plug and chug. So, put in the values. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times 70, and all that's going to be divided by... 6.38 times 10 to the 6 squared. So if I'm plugging this into my calculator, I'm going to put bigger brackets around the numerator uh, because I want to make sure that I do all this right. Now, bed mass, you're probably not going to go wrong. Uh, but again, I, I typically, to save myself hassle later on, uh, I'm going to put big brackets around the top. Second thing I'm going to mention is you'll notice how we do have the mass in kilograms. Uh, that won't always be the case. You're going to be giving masses in grams. Uh, you're going to be given distance in terms of, well, all sorts of astronomical units, like an AU, like a parsec, like a light year. Uh, so you're going to have to be able to convert into the SI units, so make sure you're aware of that. But plug and chug, we end up with a number of 686 newtons. So uh, a lot of attraction between us and the planet Earth. No shock. The distance is large, but the mass is, is significantly larger, so you would expect uh, a decent uh, force of gravity here. So that is the, the most straightforward question. Let's take a look at another one that's a little more difficult. What is the force of gravity acting on a 70 kilogram astronaut who is at an altitude of 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters? Now, one thing we need to realize is this word altitude means the distance above the Earth's surface. So we're no longer standing on the Earth's surface. So if we go to draw this picture, we're sitting up here now, which is perfect which means we're going to have this radius to deal with, but we're also going to have this altitude right here as well. So how are we going to deal with that? Well, that just means that our, our total is going to be equal to 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus another 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So make sure you remember that when you plug it in to the equation, so you should end up with a value here of 
8 times 10 to the 7 meters. So that's what you're going to use. Really important. So Fg is equal to Gmm over R squared, which is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times 70. And that's going to be divided by now our new R, which is 1.28 times 10 to the 7. And we're going to square that. And we're going to end up with a value of 171 newtons. So again, I hope that's not surprising that when we're the distance of the radius of the Earth above the surface of the Earth, we're going to feel less gravity because we're farther away. That would make sense to me, uh, especially since uh, if you take a look at the relationship here, uh, the force of gravity is related to 1 over r squared. So you would expect as you uh, move away, your force of gravity is going to drop significantly. So there we go. This one's a little tougher. Watch out for that word altitude. It's going to haunt you if you don't. Uh, we'll look at another example. Two physics lab partners sit side by side. One has a mass of 55 kilograms and the other has a mass of 65 kilograms. If they sit 50 centimeters apart, what is the irresistible force of attraction between them? As I said in previous lessons, we are all attracted to each other in some way. Uh, it, the question is just how much? Well, uh, we have all our values, so let's just go ahead and plug and chug. Now, I know this question doesn't outright say that this 50 centimeters is from the center of mass. I would say in physics 11, go ahead and assume with the exception of uh, the planetary questions where you're dealing with, say, the Earth and the Moon, then you're probably going to have to deal with the radii in some way. So make, make sure those are the case. But in a question like this, uh, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that these distances are from the center of mass. So we can just plug in the values. GMM over R squared, plug it in. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 55 times 65. And we're going to divide all that by 50 centimeters, which in meters is 0 0.5 squared SI units. And you're going to end up with a value of a whopping 9.5 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. So your lab partner may not be as attracted to you as you think, but I'm talking about this in a purely physical sense. So uh, those are, again, some very, very classic examples. Now, what would you see on a test? You might see something like this. An astronaut weighs 800 newtons on planet X. How much would she weigh if she was at an altitude equal to the radius of planet X? Well, holy moly, we don't have a lot of numbers, do we? We just have that it was 800 newtons on planet X. This is where the conceptual understanding comes in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with Fg1. So we're going to talk about the force of gravity uh, right on the surface of planet X. And it's going to be this equation here. Uh, do we know any of these besides big G? Well, no. But what do we know? Well, we know this is equal to 800 newtons. So the question is, well, how do we use that number uh, to find the solution? Well, let's deal with this altitude equal to the radius of the planet. If that's the case, our R total is going to be the radius plus the radius, which is just equal to 2R. Okay. Well, that means if we go to calculate Fg2, this is going to be our altitude uh, measurement now. That's going to be Gmm over 2r squared. Notice I put brackets around the 2r. Notice now that's all going to be squared. Okay, well, when we do that, that's going to be equal to Gmm over 2r squared is 4r squared. I can't tell you how many people make the rookie mistake of not squaring that 2. Make sure you're not the 1. So we end up with this. Well, bugger, there's still not a lot of numbers here, but check it out. If we rewrite this like this, 1 quarter gmm over r squared, does this help us at all? Absolutely, because look, now we have an equivalency here. We know that this value here is equal to 800 newtons because it was an original quantity given to us. So we can say that this is equal to a quarter times 800 newtons, which is just equal to 200 newtons. So what is the weight if she's at an altitude equal to the radius of planet X? Well, just based on the idea that we have the initial weight on the surface, we are able to calculate this just using some conceptual understanding of the equation and plugging in 
uh, some analytical type values. So this idea over here, that's the big key right there. You had to understand that. So you're going to see this again. And uh, like I say, you really have to watch what you're squaring and what you're not squaring and make sure that you keep those values uh, as exact as you can. So let's take a look. A spaceship orbits a planet at a radius r and weighs 10,000 newtons. How much would it weigh if it orbits a planet twice as massive and half the radius? All right, well, let's use the same philosophy that we used last time. We'll go FG1 is just equal to GMM over r squared, which is equal to 10,000 newtons. Okay, FG1, life is good. Now, with FG2, what are we told? Well, the planet is twice as massive. I said it's always a good idea to keep big M as the mass of the planet or the larger mass. So now that means it's equal to 2M. And half the radius, that means it's going to be equal to 1 half R instead of R. So FG2 then is going to be G times 2M times small m divided by... 1 half r squared. Again, I put brackets around it because that half is getting squared. Don't forget to square that half. And if we rewrite this now, look what we get. Well, we get 2 gmm over r squared, and then that half squared turns into a quarter. So you get 2 divided by a quarter gmm over r squared. Well, we again know that there's a connection between these two quantities, which means that's just equal to the 10,000 newtons. So what's two divided by a quarter? Well, that's equal to eight times 10,000 newtons, which is then equal to 80,000 newtons. So there's a classic example, like I say, uh, where we're playing with both masses and radii uh, typical rookie error is you're not squaring the value in front of R. Uh, usually people get the two right. So there it is. That's about as hard as it's going to get. You're not getting enough information, yet you can still solve the question, okay? So good luck. Uh, lots of questions on this, and we will talk to you again.